Good morning. If you will, get your Bibles and let's turn. Uh, where do we want to go? Say the 27 number song. Let's start there. I'm going to say we thank the Lord for uh, the holidays. And as far as I know, um, uh, no one uh, came to any hurt or uh, harm. And uh, we're grateful for that. Amen. Many were on the highways. And God uh, not only kept us, Mother, but kept our loved ones. Amen. And uh, we're just grateful. Now, Thursday has passed. But because of Brother Jeff, our belief, and because of how good that God has been to us, Brother Brimley, uh, we're still yeah. celebrating Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Amen. We th thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. I, I tell you, uh, things are, uh, God told me, he said, much of what you see is because of emotional instability. Uh, we have not gotten much help, sugar man, with our emotions. Uh, we have been taught to mask, we have been taught to uh, pretend. And uh, the biggest pretending, Orlando, that you see is at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Folks pretend like they just all right. And they just uh, sang to them, and they sang over and over again, and it's just basically like going to the club, getting drunk, just uh, put themselves in a frenzy and act like they're all right. But you know, sooner or later, you get tired of pretending. And instead of acting like you'd be all right, I want to be all right. Uh, my mama told me, he said, God will help you. And uh, God's no joke, and God's not a hustle. Uh, basically what you see in church now is, is they hustling God, uh, trying to use reverse psychology on you and telling you you can't be God given. You see, you, you can't con a person unless they greedy. And so they have to appeal to your greed in order to con you. And so they know how stingy that you are. And so you're not going to give nothing unless you think you're going to get something. And so they tell you that if you just give it, he's going to bless you ten, a hundredfold. Matter of fact, he's going to open up the windows of heaven. You like that. Because you said, now it's got to be a whole lot in heaven. So he's going to open up the windows. And he's going to pull me out of blessing, Sister Lily, that I won't have room enough to receive. But you see, what God is, God is not about getting, Sister LeVette. That's how come we, we <laughs> you have to get, Solomon said, with all that getting, get an understanding. Amen. Get an understanding. And uh, we have been played so long on our emotions. Uh, you know what? That, that if, I, if, if I mess your emotions up enough, you ain't got time to think. Yeah. Oh, okay, then I put it in Negro terms. Uh, you ever been so emotionally involved with somebody that you couldn't see the signpost? They was all there. Everybody else could see them. Amen. Everybody else probably knew what was going on, but you didn't know because you were just so emotional. Amen. You just, I'm telling you what, just every time you saw them, just stars and little birds and stuff started going around. But mother, when you came to your senses, yes. when you came to your senses, you said, look, if I knew then what I know now, I would have made better decisions. A guy told me the other day, Thanksgiving Day, sitting down, he told me, he said, an old man told him, that if I had known I was going to live this long, mm -hmm. I'd have been a better friend to myself. Yes, yes. Your decisions, your decisions are very important. And I cannot make decisions when I don't have control of my emotions. And we have misled folks in church, yes. giving them some kind of jack leg theology uh, instead of uh, actually helping them psychologically. Some of the craziest folks in the world is up in church. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I don't know nothing about them other folk, but I've been dealing with colored folk for a long time. And I'm telling you, they'll say something or anything and expect you to go along with it. 
That's the reason, Fred, you got to have a backbone. Now, when Jesus came here, he had a backbone. He didn't bite his tongue. The reason was he stood for the truth. And Peter, even though Peter was, uh, you know, wishy-washy and everything, once that Peter became indwelt by the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit will change you. You run around here trying to make folk do this and do that. Give them a good dose of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit began to lead you, you got different fruit coming out your life then. You'll find yourself being kind to folks that can't stand you. You'll find yourself being able to be patient with stuff that you used to couldn't stand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So then we, we, we've needed help for a long time. But, but, but we've got caught up in our emotions, how we felt about stuff. Somebody the other day said, asked the question, somebody, is the Lord satisfied with you? Now that sound good. You church folk, y'all will take that and run with it. Is the Lord satisfied with me? But you see, biblically, God has already told you that all your righteousness is as filthy rags. <laughs> You run around trying to make God satisfied with you instead of believing the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, being crucified with Christ, giving up on yourself. That's why we got so much problem in church now. You got folks walk running around in themselves. And as long as self is on the throne, you worried about what's about self. But when you become crucified with Christ, then you can say like Paul, it's no longer me. I ain't worried about what you think about me. I ain't worried about how you feel about me or nothing. Because you see, what well, is no longer me, but it's Christ. He's in me, and I'm in him. The book of Romans says that he has become our propitiation. You must understand that nothing could satisfy God but the blood from his son. He is not satisfied. That's the reason we want to build big temples. We want to go and get a fleet of vans and they got but seven members. We want to have a van. We want to put folks in it. You, you, people, are, people are just tired of coming to church because you beg the whole time you come to the church. I already I, I got a stack of bills at home that big. I'm coming to church trying to get some relief. I get here and I hear about the bills that's at church. All right. well, what y'all need to do is if we in such financial strain, we need to pat down. You, we need to live, but, need, but quit trying to be like Second Baptist. Quit trying to be like First Church and, and live according to our. Yes. But in your emotions. Yes. Do you know that your emotions will get off in yourself and you want to be this and, and you want to be that? But, but, but if you allow, allow God mm -hmm. to crucify self yes. and say, Lord, you know what? Any way you bless me, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. You see, Brother Jeff, it was not Isaiah, but it was Albert King. And Albert King said, loneliness is a terrible thing. He said, loneliness has made folk do, uh, am I talking to anybody this morning? So loneliness has made people do stuff that they really normally wouldn't do. But I heard the old Baptist preacher say, he's a mighty good company keeper. You're running around and you want these folks to like you and you want these folks to be accepted and whatever. I remember one time, Deborah, that I was, you know, when I was in college and everything, I wanted to be a part of the in crowd because, you know, it looked like to me that they were having so much fun. And I found myself one time just where, you know, I'm, they ain't inviting me or nothing, but I'm just coming up there, standing up there, listening to them talk and whatever. All of a sudden, everybody stopped talking just looked at me like, what you here for? <laughs> Maybe you've never been through that, but it was a good, I thank God for it. I want to talk about that this morning. I, I want to stop this madness, stop this foolishness that's going on. Uh, Psalm 27. Just give me a few minutes, I promise you. We're going somewhere. Psalm 27 and the 13th verse. I want to use that as my scripture text. Psalm 27 and the 13th verse. You with me? Look what David the psalmist says. Uh, about God and God's power to hold your faith. And he says, I had fainted yeah. mm -hmm. unless I had believed. Right. See, you don't know what I'm talking about. It was just my belief. It was just my faith that I'm here today. It wasn't a paycheck. It wasn't none of you. I had fainted. It get rough sometimes. It get rough sometimes. I, I thank you. I wish I had two two real folks here this morning. 
that will tell the truth and say, I ain't doing as good as I look. I promise you I'm not. I ain't, doing, I ain't near about doing that, but I learned how. Don, I learned how, not you know, to wash my face. I learned how to put on my best clothes. And I, I learned how to walk. Cause I found out that when folks find out really how you're doing, you really in trouble then. When they find out really how broke you are, you can't get a quarter. Amen. I'm gonna get some help this morning. I promise you, I am. I didn't come here for nothing else. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Okay, let's go on, take us a topic. Uh, look at your neighbor, look him right there now. And tell him, say, my pain, my pain brought, me brought me here. Pain, 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 pain brought me here. And I'm just asking you, preacher, preacher, please don't disappoint me this morning. I, I don't know who you was looking for. I don't know if your favorite person didn't show up or whatever, but I got up. Yeah. I got up and I came out. Please don't disappoint because you see, look at somebody else and tell them, say, my pain, my pain. brought me here. Pain. Pain is something else. You know what? Pain can either, it can either make you better or it can make you worse. But my pain, uh, pain brought me here. David says, I had fainted. I was almost gone. I had ready that. You ever been there? I was ready to give up. I was tired. I said, I can't do this no more. But the only thing that saved me was, I just believed. I, I believe he can. I know he will. You brought me too far. You brought me too far to just to leave me. I can't see nothing. Don't look like nothing to go. Folks, I've been good too. Done turned their back and walked out. Look like everything is falling. But the only thing that's got me this morning is I just believe. I just believe that. that, that <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me here. Turn if you will. I'm going to come back there maybe. Turn if you will over to Lamentations. The third chapter, Lamentations. That's the prophet Jeremiah. Right after the prophet Jeremiah, he writes Lamentations. You know, I, I need Lamentations. Do you know, the folk want you to hear all their problems, but they ain't got 10 minutes to hear nothing about what's going on with you. They want, I promise you, it's some of the same folk that, that are burning, in fact, they burn your phone up. They want you to sit, and Lord have mercy, you know as bad as pastor. I'm supposed I'm to care about everybody. You know, just, not only you, I'm supposed to care about your cousin and your sister and, and whatever. And I don't even know what's going on with them and everything. You don't even come to church no more because the pastor didn't come to my third cousin's wedding. But I want you to know, pain brought me here. Yeah. It's some things that'll break you, that that break you down to your heart. And and see, people, we want to look on the outside, and you think just because I got on nice clothes, I drove up in a nice car, or uh, I got this amount of money, you think that everything is all right. But I don't live in these clothes. I don't live in that car. I, I live right here. With her, and I want you to know that the devil is out to take your mind. The, the, the devil is out, and but what he uses is he uses the pride of man because we always like to look. There. But do you know that sometimes you? I know you don't believe this, but it's some folk that don't come to church because their hair ain't like they think you choose. Say, I was coming, but my hair, I couldn't get my... I, pain brought me here. But I want you to know something. You get that right lick. I'm talking about the right pain will hit you. You'll throw a hat on your head and you'll walk up in this yard and talk about me all y'all want to this morning. But I need some help from God. Thank, I, I can help you right now if you let me. They're going to talk about you anyway. Amen. You had the best hair do in the world. My hair, they don't. Yeah, what y'all said now. Nah, look, she slayed me. I don't know what that means. You had the best hair do in the world. And somebody's still going to talk about the sugar man. Tell me, look at her. That, that, that ain't none of her hair. She bought it. I tell me, it ain't none of her. All right, Whose is it? You 
word about somebody. I'm talking about this morning my brother get some help with my feelings because you see, I have walked past folks that need my help because I was so much in my feelings. There were people that God has assigned me to in order to help them but because I was in my feelings I could not help them but I'm telling God, God pain brought me here. So you don't know other folk pain until you feel something. Mm-hmm. 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 You steady going to funerals and you you mainly the reason you showing up is 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 that you just want to see I ain't seen such and such and I don't know when. I'm going to the funeral because I graduated with a son and, and I ain't been there, but I want you to know something. Let you sit on the front row. Let, let, let you sit on the front. You don't care who there. You don't remember who was that. Pain. Sometimes people don't understand why you like you are. Mother, they say you're too serious. You, you, you're too serious or whatever. But you see, I was blessed to feel enough pain. I was blessed. You see, that's the reason it's good to live for a while. It's good to live for a while because you see, what was it? the pain hit you? Yes. Then you know some things that you used to didn't know. Yes, Lord. Uh, a pain, pain brought me here. Yes. What what I said? Lamentations. Yes. Let me see. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah come after after Isaiah, doesn't it? Yes. Then after, yes. then after. Yes. I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. Thank you. You can't talk about lamentation unless you talk about Jeremiah. You can't talk about my pain. Thank you, Jesus. You can't talk about my pain till you talk about me. You see, because you, God told me, said, look here. See, you don't even understand. Say you, you, here you are. You went out here. You talking about you was on crack. You was on this. And it was all that. That wasn't even about the crack. That wasn't about the alcohol. All that was about your feelings. You see, people take stuff in order to change the way they feel. You, whatever it is that you might, you might not get no crack, but it was just like crack. They like to strip you naked. They like to ran you crazy. Whatever it was. And the reason you went and got it because you were trying to change the way you felt. <laughs> What will we do? What will I do in order to change the way I feel? Thank you, Lord. Uh-huh. I mess around and gain 60, 70 pounds trying to change the way I feel because I'm lonely. I'm sitting at home. Don't nobody else. You done raised up children. You done, you done gave up everything. If you like my mom and everything, you ain't had time for no friends. You try, but they need you. These parents today ain't like that. Uh, honey, I ain't giving up my life. You going to the club right along with them. Amen. Doing stuff right in front of them and everything. We always were doing it, but we just wouldn't do it in front of the children. Amen. But they don't care now. They do it right there in front of the children. Amen. Amen. You, in the house, you raise up children and everything, do everything that you can, and, and they, they ain't got time to come by to see it. You, you don't know how nobody doing. You don't never come see them. You say that. I didn't know. I, I know you didn't know. How do you know? I ain't seen you. But you see what it is, it, it's not your fault. You so much into yourself yeah. and what you going through Lord, that you ain't got no time for nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Don, I come here this morning yeah. asking God, said, God, help me with my feelings. my feelings. Help me with my feelings because you see, what they do, Sister Madeline Vint, what they do is, is they tell you to take your feelings and stuff them. You better yeah. say it, Mm -hmm. That's how come they had that stuff that, that, that they had in, in, in Las Vegas. Let me keep stuffing them. Let me keep stuffing them. I'll be going to climb one of these towers. Oh, uh -uh, I ain't going to jump off and take a high powered rifle. Oh, um, it's just me. It's just, it's just me. Ain't nobody else in here that never had no time to kill all y'all. Where y'all think that come from? That come from my feelings. Yeah. I'm trying to get some kind of release yes, Lord. from my feelings. Every time I come to church, you playing games with me about my salvation. Yeah. You playing games with me about God and whether he loved me. And I'm going to tell you what, if God don't love me, how can anybody else love me? I done got so bad, I done done so much that God don't even love me. How can anybody else love me? But when I'm assured of the love of God, that neither life, nor death, nor powers, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate me from the love of God when pain pushed me here. 
I'm seven steps from killing everybody. Right. In the house, and when I leave the house, I'm looking for y'all. Right. Caught somewhere between homicide and suicide. I know it sounds funny, y'all, but I'm gonna tell you what. I, I come to serve notice on you. My feelings are important. Yes. That's the reason, Brother Jeff, I don't talk to a whole lot of folk. All right. <laughs> because, see, you making it worse. Yes. I'm already feeling bad. All right. And then when I talk to you, you're going to minimize the way I feel. On, the way you feel is important. Yep. But you want to say that I feel like I feel because I'm a bad person. All right. But how many know you can't help how you feel? Yes. I feel like I feel. And one of the worst things I hate is when you tell me, look, you need to get over that. Yes, you see, you, I, you need to get, if I could get over it, I would have been a guy. Do you think I like going around feeling like this? But there's some things that happen to you. I don't care if it was you six or you seven years old. There's some things that happen that until you get some help, you can't shake them. You think you done shook it. You think you're going to sugar because you bought that BMW 7 Series and because you got the promotion on the job and because you married that right person. You think you're going to sugar it, but it don't take but one thing to happen. <laughs> one thing to happen and all of a sudden that you taking out on them something that happened 20, 30 years ago because I'm still carrying a rock. Pain pushed me here. <laughs> My pain brought me here and I don't care. Like I told y'all a long time ago, if it ain't nobody left here but me and you, we're going to get some help. Amen. I have no need to be here this morning Amen. other than to get some help. Yes, it, I'm doing fine. Yes, Lord. I'm doing fine. I ain't got no reason. I don't need no new friends. Amen. See, folks, I found out that you really don't need to know all the folks you know. Amen. That's it. That's it. I found it out, Sister Cynthia Dyer. Yes, but I tell you what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to know him. I'm talking about the one who, the lover of my soul. I'm talking about the one when y'all sleep and don't want to be bothered. I'm talking about the one that all I got to do, I ain't got to get in my car and come see. You know what? I know folk that's supposed to be my relatives that'll come to town and ain't got to go but two miles and won't come by my house to see me. But I know a man that came down from heaven, put on faith. I know a man that all I got to do, get out on my knee. And call out him. Huh? David said that this poor man cried. Pain brought me here. The pain brought me here. What I found out about it is, is that until you get enough pain, you ain't gonna call. Uh -uh, uh, until you get enough pain, I, I do that now. I'm going around, everything look like stuff is getting confused in my mind. But mother, I'm steady telling the Lord, that's all right, I got it. If they go see my mother, no. I got it. I got it. But when I get enough pain, when I feel like I'm about to go crazy, when I feel like, what, what do you holler? Lord, Lord, Lord oh, that's all. When Jesus was passing by, Mother, he passed by a lot of people. It was a whole lot of blind folk. But it was blind bottom males that cried out. <laughs> he said, Jesus. <laughs> and in case Jesus didn't know who he was, <laughs> he said, Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> then he told him, he didn't tell him what he deserved. <laughs> because if you like me, you know you hadn't crossed every T. You hadn't dotted every I. You hadn't done everything just right. But he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Oh, I need some. I need some help. And you know what? I love that what you taught Lady Deborah where you said that God gave David three choices and you know whether this is happened there. And David said, I tell you what, God said, let me just fall in your hand. Because I know if I fall in your hand, you'll have mercy on me. And so then God, that's what I'm going through. I just, I'm just going to just fall in your hand because I, I heard the Baptist deacon say a long time ago, he said, if the Lord don't help me, I can't stand the storm. I'm so glad to be there today. 
And I don't know how many preachers, I don't know how many organizations, Fred, that I don't had to tell me, talking about, so come on in, come on back, son, come on home, come on in, we'll help you. But I'm glad, I believe what the deacon said. He said, if the Lord don't help me, I'm looking for God to feed me every day. Feed me and mine. Because you see, man is like this right here. Man is so critical. Do you, have you ever seen that folk that are doing the same thing that you're doing, but they want to talk about you? Now we come to find out that ain't nobody living. They got no sex problem. All right. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. They got Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose sitting up there like he don't think. Ain't got nothing on his mind but right. All right. I told them, I said, oh, Lord, Charlie Rose a freak. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, y'all don't like that. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get too real for y'all sometimes. I get too real. But I'm going to tell you something. When you go to the doctor, sometimes he'll tell you, he say, well, we need to do this, we need to do that, and you hit, no, no, that's all right. You walk on off, and you go on. But when the pain, just like Carl Ray, then I told him he needed to get the operation on his knee. He come in there walking like Applejack this morning. <laughs> It's all right, but ain't nothing nobody can tell him. My mama done talked to him. My mama said, Carl Ray, because we love him. Carl Ray, go take care. Go, go take care. No, no, I got to do this. I got this bill in the put up. I got to do this. I got to do that. But when the pain gets, thank you, Chief. When the pain gets, you, you ain't got nothing else to do. I'm sorry. Whatever it is, you, you can wait because I got to go take care of this right here. Pain. Look at somebody else and tell them, pain brought me here. Pain brought me here. How come you belong to me now? So pain brought me here, baby. I ain't, I ain't thinking about Brother Bland. I ain't thinking about, I ain't nothing, I ain't thought about Airport Road. Ain't nothing down to pain. Pain, my pain brought me here. If you get enough pain, you say, I'm not going back to that foolishness. I'm not going back to that. Stop the madness. You can have all that foolishness. That's right. All that stuff right here. What do it may matter? I'm talking about something you need fellowship. All right. If you got two zeros that fellowshipping together, what you got? Zero. <laughs> what they got? Billy Preston, Billy Preston by something, what? Nothing from nothing? Lead nothing. Lead nothing. I've been nothing long enough. Yes. I know how to be nothing. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. And sometimes nothing feels better than trying to do something. Yes. Yes. Don't you know it feels good sometimes to be, to be running and then and you turn around and you look saying ain't nothing to nail one of us. All right. Ain't none of us doing nothing. nothing. But boy, we make each other feel good. Lord, we sit up and lie to one another us, Lord, about how good that we doing. Right. Pain brought me here. Yes, sir. I thank God. Yes, now, now watch this right here. It come a time that I wanted to get out of it. And God wouldn't open the door. All right. Lord, I'm tired of this right here. He wouldn't open the door. All right. And after he finally let me out, I asked him, I said, well, God, how come you didn't do this? Here? He said, I had to let you stay long enough. All right. Come on, Pastor. Come on. If I had let you out right then, you'd have turned back and went back to it. Yeah. But I let you get a full dose of that foolishness. Uh uh, they can't tell me nothing about it, but Jeff, I done seen enough, been there, done that, got the t shirt and the hat. Yeah. I seen them where they talking about they need money. I'm tired of hearing about the money. I go in my pocket and give them the money, and they come to find out they didn't even spend it on what they said they were going to do. All right, all right. I ain't talking about in the crop house. I'm talking about at church. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Right. Pain. Yes. Pain brought me here. Yeah. And then the same one that done misused your lender, the same one that they ain't had nothing good to say about y'all come to you and say, come on back. Yeah. Folk got audacity. And all I tell him is, he said, well, you know, I'll think about it. That's a way for you just to get out of my face. All right. All right. You know, so you think I'm that big a fool. And see, the thing about it, sugar man, is if you ever, I know you don't know about this, <laughs> but if you ever been a fool for a woman, uh -huh. I, I don't care how much sense you get, uh -huh. you still a fool. Amen. You need to realize that. Yes, Lord. They can't see you no other way. <laughs> They can't see you no other way. And you never was a fool, you just loved them. That's it. See, love will make you look over stuff that you yes. used to couldn't. Yes, Lord. Mama tried to talk to you. Yes. Your partners tried to talk to you. Everybody. Couldn't nobody talk to you. No. Couldn't nobody tell you nothing. Yes, you told them, they couldn't tell you for you talking to them. Right. You telling mama, mama, you just don't know. Right, and then you say, then you holler out, you know what? 
My, my wife mama tried to talk to her about me. Here you got somebody coming out here to visit you. The Negro grown and won't wear no socks. <laughs> That's the first thing let you know something wrong with him. I mean, I don't care if he got a suit on. He ain't going to put no socks on. Then he coming to see your daughter. Not only is he drunk, but he driving a drunk car. The car drunk. Uh-huh. Couldn't tell her a thing. But pain. Look at When she left me, mama didn't have to tell her nothing. She said, my, my, uh, when you get enough pain, ain't nobody got to sit down and talk to you, counsel you, or nothing. You tell them like the blues singer song, bye bye baby, I'm gone. Tell them, so you ain't got enough of nothing to keep me here. My pain brought me here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I said, Lamentation 3. Let's look at, uh, I think it's 21. 22. Lamentation 3 and 22. Mm -hmm. I ain't be around nobody no more, mother, that, that, uh, Minimize my pain. You know what? You ain't got time. You want me to hear about you. But you ain't got time to hear about what I'm going through. See, because sometimes, Dorothy, I don't need you to do nothing. Most of the time. I don't need you to do nothing. I'm not coming to you for no money. I don't need you to fix me, Madeline. Sometimes, I just need somebody to listen to me. Please just listen and so step correct. Don't don't judge me. Don't don't do like Job friend talking about what I did and nothing. Just let me get it out. Just, just let me get this up out of me. And when it come up out of me, when I hear it, I already know what my answer is. I done gave my answer while I'm talking about it. That's the reason my circle is small. I know a whole lot of folk, but they don't know me. Because my circle is small, friend. I don't need you around. Amen. I go to work every day, so I don't need you to buy me no lunch meat sandwich. Right. I buy my own lunch meat sandwich. Right. And then them days that I ain't got no lunch money or nothing, I just I, I get the Miss Meal cramps. I'll be all right. I catch something tomorrow. Yes. Because I found out that we see when you need folk, you when you need folk, they do you like they want to do. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, they, they do you like you want to do it. And so the last frontier, we don't got the money thing down. Mm -hmm. But the last frontier is our emotions. Yeah. You see, because even our family, we got families that play on our emotions. Amen. I'm going to tell you how much they think about you, you don't see them, do you? I'm the one to tell you. They don't call you, do they? I told y'all the other son the reason they don't call you because they don't want to talk to you. But my bad, they do call you when they want something. My bad, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah. But you see, I'm the one got to stop this madness. Yes. Yes, sir. And I ain't mad at you or nothing like that, but I can't keep living like that. No. I can't keep living in this emotional pain because what I found out, it don't bother you. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's sitting over there to, and then I'm asking God to my why. If it were possible for God to get tired, he'd have been tired of you and me. Amen. To my and why. Why? The answer sitting right there in front of you. You got folks that love you. You got folks that looking for your attention. You got folks that need your help. But you won't, you won't pay them no attention because you're running after folks that ain't thinking about you. you better say that, you better but I want you to know something. My pain. It wasn't no good feelings or nothing. See, and the thing about it is, is that we almost die kneeling at the altar of feeling good. Amen. We run after everything that make us feel good. Yes, uh-huh. That's the reason that you went on Friday and bought them same pants that you had already had. Because right. you know, you at one time you went and you bought something like that and it made you feel good. Mm -hmm. And so you're going back trying to get that same feeling. Yeah, and see, the thing about it is, this principle I use here at the church, you know, we ain't taking no offer for the rest of the, of the month, I mean, the rest of the year. But the principle I use here at the church is, we're very careful with the money. Mm -hmm. Because you see, what you don't spend you don't have to take up. Amen. We for real here. Now they just taking up money in order to do no go do what they want to do with it. That's but we right. taking up money in order to keep it operating. That's right. Okay? But now what you what you don't spend, you out here foolishly doing this and doing that and everything, it keep you working. Amen. You'll never be able to retire. Amen. Because you ain't got nothing. 
I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. Philippians, I mean, Lamentation 3. Okay, you with me? Let's hit this right here and go home. Uh, 22. The Bible says here, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. David said at one time, it was good for me that I was afflicted. I tell y'all often, please do not feel sorry for me. Amen. Every lick I've got, I need it. Because I was a hard head child. Yes. Then I was a stubborn child. Come on. Yes. You got some children, you have to beat them almost to death. Because they're going to show you I ain't going to cry. I ain't going to cry. Mm -mm. No. All that, I'm like this right here. The, for the first, when I pledged, and I pledged with one other guy. And I ain't supposed to say that, but I ain't gonna no, I ain't gonna tell that. I leave that alone. It was some licks past somewhere. And I tell you what, he was hard. And when the licks hit him, he was like this right here. But George, all they had to do was act like they were finna hit me. I got my nickname Fleabag when I pledge because I wore the same blue jeans the whole time I pledge. I look like I was dying the whole time. Oh Lord, y'all killing me. They wasn't doing that. I was drunk half the time. Drinking me, I, I, I had them to put me up a half a gallon of taro yeah, every night. Some of the time they thought they were hurting me, I was just drunk, I was like. Pain brought me here. When I get to the place, mother, when you grow up, it don't take much. When you find yourself on the wrong, see, I give. I surrender, Lord. Ain't I, I messed up? Able one God, that's you. God put me back on the right, on the right path. Lord, separate me from these folk. Separate me from these people because most of our pain is coming from people. Most of our pain is coming from folk that we won't let go. And you standing running to them same folks trying to make everything all right. When you gonna stop trying to make the same people be different? My pain brought me here. I'm almost through. I ain't got but four minutes. Three now. Three minutes, 13 seconds. He said, uh, <clears throat> his compassions fail not. Lady Deborah, I need to fall in the Lord's hand Amen. and quit worrying about these folks. And then he says, they are new every morning. Amen. Then he said, great. Amen. Mother, is he faithful? Yes, he is. Huh? Yes, he is. Hold on. I need to give you the mic point. Let's just let you tell him. He's faithful. Huh? Nine and what? 91, 91, great, my pain, but you know what Tom, that was a time that I ran to everybody but the Lord, I'm going to tell the truth, I went to everybody but the Lord, but brother Alex, my pain told me, my pain told me, said run to him first, because great is his faithfulness. David said, I had fainted. I don't know how many times that I want to throw in. I don't know how many times I want to give up. I don't know how many times I thought, ain't no way. But David said, if I had not believed, that's the reason he told Peter. When Peter, he said, Peter, you're getting ready to go through something. It ain't going to be like you think. But I have prayed, not that you don't go through it, but I prayed that your faith don't fit. I, I like that song that woman sang, I remember, Weston, where she said, I'm just holding on. I'm just holding. You don't know. Sometimes you see me, you think pastor doing wonderful in it, but I promise you, bro, Jeff, all I'm doing, I'm just holding on to my faith. I'm just believing that I know he can and believe he will. I just believe that the Lord will make a way. Tell them, folk that you ain't never done nothing to, digging ditches, trying to make... You 
three steps from killing somebody because somebody that don't believe fat meat grease eh, done done something to your child and they don't know. They just don't know that if the Lord don't help you. Because I'm going to tell you, about two or three folks like me, Sue, that once you touch one of them or mine, I don't want to hear nothing about Jesus, Manasseh, Church of God in Christ, the bishop, the apostle, uh, nothing. Because I'm going to tell you what, you do right now. They talking about all this about tomorrow. That's when I thank God I didn't have no girls. Because they wouldn't, I promise to God, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't need. You wouldn't need no DNA samples. I'm talking about we can't prove the case or nothing like that. You ain't got to prove it. Ain't going to be no trial. You just take me up and where my seat at? That right over there? I just go go in there. Right. I, I seen folk like that. I seen a dude do that. Yeah. That's right. He, he killed him and then walked in there and, and sat down in the thing and told him how many years. Said, Y'all you offer me 20 years, I take it right now. <laughs> Say, look what he says. His mercies, yeah. they are new every morning. Yeah. Let me read these two verses. I'm gone. My time is up. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Pain brought me here. I didn't know who my portion was. I thought it was you. I thought I needed you. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good. Anybody testify to that? The Lord is good unto them that wait on him. Uh David said, I had fainted. But I learned how to lean and depend upon the Lord. Yeah. I learned, Brother Sugar Man, that you might not have it today. But just, just keep on waiting. Yeah. Uh, I got another witness. I called Brother Isaiah. Brother Isaiah, has I not heard? Has I not known? Yeah. Huh? That he, he faints not. He gives strength, right? Yeah. You'll walk and not be weary. You'll run and not faint. They can't understand how it is that you're still holding your head up. How it is that you're still going. They thought that was going to take you upon them. But you can say, just like David, I had fainted unless I had believed. My faith is holding me. Pain brought me here. Clap your hands for the Lord.